So we have a true hero here on our campus today who will speak to you about furthering your education. express my thanks to your board members and school officials for making this day possible for us to be together. I wish your principals, principal, please stand. Give a big hand. All teachers, teachers, please stand. Teachers, please stand. Please stand. Board members, please stand. Class of 2015, please stand. We come today in this common place, the school. Many of us met here a few years ago for the first time from many different walks of life. Dr. King would be proud of you today in this multiracial, multicultural setting, many languages, with one message, whether it's in Spanish or French or English, one message, we must learn to live together as wise people, not die apart as fools. When the bomb struck in New York 9-11, it did not destroy people by race, or gender, religion, but by an idea of meanness and sickness. We must reject that sickness and choose another way. We learn to live apart and survive. We learn to survive apart. Now we have a more difficult challenge as Americans, learning to live together. In many ways, it's a unique American experiment. Mexico for the Mexicans, France for the French, Japan for the Japanese. Africa for the Africans. Here in America we find ourselves with this strange admixture of hope and hopelessness. People from around the world coming here to learn a new thing, learning to live together. There are those who would convince you that you can't learn. Maybe you surrender and do not try. No one has the right to do less than their best. My best is not your best, your best is not my best. But everybody has a best. And we have many gifts. Strong minds break strong chains. Strong minds break strong chains. And no matter what one may think of you because of your race, or gender, or nationality, if you develop a cure for cancer, there'll be the way, be the door, a path to your doorstep. If you use your mind to its fullest, your enemies will have to bow and thank you for giving them a life option. 
And so strong minds break strong chains. Life is full of choices and consequences. Those choices may be limited, but for every choice there is a consequence. You are, at your age, is old enough to, skilled enough to climb, somehow get to the top of this wall and, and dive. The teacher couldn't catch you. The principal didn't see you. You are free to jump on the top of this building, but you're not free to avoid the consequences. You're free, you're free to not study, but not free to avoid the consequences. Somehow we must choose futures over funerals, and life over death, and maximize life's opportunities. For many of us, it becomes a way out, athletics. And so, such a skill to revive so much craft and risk. So you develop the best athletes in the world, right here in Oakland. Whether it's Marshall Lynch, whether it's Frank Robinson, whether it's Ricky Henderson. The great best athletes in the world have come out of here. Bill Russell. You can call the role. Some of the great scholars who have lesser public names have come right out of Oakland. Many of them sat where you sit today. But they've done well beyond school because they made up their minds to go to higher ground. Deep water does not drown you. You drown when you stop kicking. You stop flailing with the water. Nobody has the right to do less than their best. Every generation has some obstacle to overcome. It's primary in its day. The several generations must overcome slavery in America of African people, occupation in South, Central, and Latin America. In some sense, because of the work of so many people, not the least of which was Dr. King and Chavez, now South, Central, and Latin America freed of occupation, but not of poverty. Many African American Latinos freed of segregation, but not freed of poverty. In some sense, poverty is the issue of our time. How do we fight poverty? A weapon of mass destruction which for many people limits their dreams, their hopes, and their, and their possibilities. Yet poverty must be an incentive, not a roadblock. If I'm behind, run faster. Get up earlier, be more determined. In the big game tonight between Oakland's Golden State Warriors and, and Houston, if your team is behind, don't look to the sideline for pity. Look to the goal for a point. No one wants to hear why you're behind. Run faster, jump higher, defense better, and somehow make it. And for some, success ha needs no explanation. Failure does not have one that matters. And so in some sense, we've come by here with you today talk about new possibilities for you next door. So the walls of slavery came down and segregation. Then we fight for gender equality and we fight for racial justice. Next door to you is the largest, most robust industry in the whole world called Silicon Valley. And somehow, some way, it has passed over you. <coughs> They're going to India and China, H-1B visas they call them, looking for youth who mastered science, technology, engineering and math, called it CM education. They're lobbying in the Congress, looking for more what they call STEM students. 
going across the world looking for those who are inclined to do engineering. The assumption that it cannot happen in Oakland, it can. Say so there's nothing. Repeat, there's nothing. There we cannot do. We, cannot. we can learn. We, can. we must learn. We, we will learn. We, will. we can learn science, learn science. Technology, technology, engineering, engineering. math. Yeah. If we have the faith, yeah. if we have the faith, yeah. we all have the power to yeah. see us through. Yeah. So buckle down yeah. and give them up yeah. and make it happen. Put your hand together. You must avoid short term pleasure for long term pain. So I must avoid short term pleasure for long term pain. My mind matters. My mind will sustain me beyond the ball field. Now, because there's so much fascination with athletics and so much money involved, Many of you can get scholarship to college playing football and basketball and baseball and track. Am I right about that? That's right. But that's not as true for students studying science and technology and engineering and math. We're going to change that. Today, Rainbow Push is going to present to your school district. We're going to present to uh, Chris Chapman from the African American Male Achievement. That's it. And and Regina Jackson will present you today $15,000 for scholarships today. I'm all kind of, kind of close this because next door is Silicon Valley. Here, all these gadgets you have, the, the smartphones and the iPads, all of the gadgets that you have comes from right down the street. And yet somehow you've been left out of it. We're going to change that. So Oakland, Oakland, Oakland will be a resource, a resource for Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. We'll create the we'll apps, the apps, 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 and codes, and codes ideas, ideas will change the world. Change the we will world. stop we'll the stop killing. killing. We'll stop, stop the violence. Stop. We will master we'll science. science. Science, technology, technology engineering, engineering math, math computer science we can we will we must we want you to have interns in the summertime to go to, to go to on the campuses where you can work and learn at the same time we want you to get scholarships when you can leave here and get a chance to go to college and the direct job promise I want to close on this note madam principal because Sometime when we introduce like this, we miss some of the point. Dr. King, we see him, now he's immortalized as a martyr. When he was a martyr, he was attacked and killed. As a martyr, there's no limits to our almost worship of him. And we see him giving the I Have a Dream poetic climax of speech in Washington in 1963. But the day he gave that speech, from Texas to Florida to Maryland, black and Latinos couldn't use a single public toilet. The day he gave that speech, we could not sit on the lawn of state capitals, but dogs could, if you were black and Latino. The day he gave that speech, black and Latino soldiers had to sit behind knots of prisoners of war on American military bases. The day he gave that speech, we could not buy ice cream at Howard Johnson. We could not run a room on Holiday Inn. The day he gave that speech, he dreamed beyond his circumstances. He didn't start dreaming that day. Brother King at age 14 did a debate on the Negro and the Constitution, thinking deep. He finished high school at 15. He finished college at 19. Got a seminary degree at 22, his PhD at 26. So Dr. King, so Dr. King had a good mind. He used his mind to help liberate a people. But those who are successful also know failure sometimes. So when we come to grips with our failures, we should be able to redesign and go another way. 
Well, the moment of embarrassing moment, teachers, is my work in French. When I was a ninth grade student with a great football team, I made it as a freshman. I felt so good about myself. It was a big deal in our little hometown. And so I also made the honor roll. So that was like a big, big, big deal. Next year, my mother said, they want you to get in the choir, Jesse. I said, Mama, I I'm not going to be in the choir because I'm not a choir boy. I'm a football player. She said, I know what you're implying, but if that be the case, you're already gone. I want you to learn something other than Jane Brown. I want you to learn some full part harmony. Learn some hallelujah chorus. Learn some I will give thanks under thee. I want you to go a little beyond. I want you to learn what the word acapella means. And, and so I joined the choir because Mama said so. And 55 choir members, about seven boys. It worked out pretty good. <laughs> and then the next year she said, uh, because Mrs. Sales said, I want you to learn, I want you to take French. I said, Mama, I don't want to take French. I'm doing very well in history and math and English. And because I, I had to spend more time learning another language. And so some of the guys said, look, Jesse, man, I said, be smart. See, you're grown. You're, seven, you're 16 years old. Look here, let me tell you right now. If you speak French, you can't speak it to us. And we don't know what you're talking about. And so it's, it, 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 your mama not making sense. And so I usually ignore the guys, but that time I kind of went for the okie doke. And so I was working real hard, a little French, you know, every little Chevrolet and, you know, little stuff here and there. And um, Mrs. Sales said, when she said, Jesse, you're not doing your best. I said, I swear. She said, don't swear and don't lie. You're not doing your best. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, no, no, no. You couldn't do as well as you do in English and language and not do it well in this language, learning another language. And I was not doing my best. But I still had enough A's and B's to balance off, so I stayed, still played football, still had around 3.4 average, so I was cool. I remember coming across the graduation stage, and Miss Sales, I got my diploma, and I got 15 scholarships, and I don't know French. Hee, hee, hee. She said, well, keep on living. I did my best. Went to college. At some point, I had to take a foreign language, French, German, or Spanish. And I wish I had been taking Spanish now, because I want all young African Americans to learn to speak Spanish. Well, young, all the Latinos are learning to speak English. Why? Because I said, we are neighbors. Two thirds of our hemisphere speak Spanish. English is a minority language in our hemisphere. I want to be a part of the real world. Half of all human beings are Asian, half of them are Chinese. One eighth of the human race is African. 6% North American, 6% Russian. Most people in the world are yellow, brown, black, non-Christian, poor, female, young, and don't speak English. I want to join the real world, so I want to speak more than one language. English is a great language. But Jesus did not speak it. <laughs> so language is important. Talk to me somebody. So I got to college. I remember coming down, uh, Dr. Rice said, Jesse, are you president of student body? I thought when well, you joined the French class, it would help the culture of the campus. He said, you're not doing very, you're not doing. I said, Doc, I swear, he said, don't swear, don't lie. It was kind of deja vu all over again. And uh, I remember so well at graduation time, I said, Doc, I am now uh, married, I have my college diploma, and I don't know French. He said, I tried my best. A few years later, I was working with Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Dr. King was killed. I was thrust away out in the world with him not by my side any longer. I got a call one day from the State Department. It says, six African nations are starving to death, and they can't get water. Will you help them? I said, I'd be glad to help. They ran to me real quick. They said, I said, I'll come to Washington. They said, no, we'll come to Chicago and meet you. And they came, I should never forget, a guy named Gamora Yusufa came around the corner in a big, long limousine. He said, Jesse, come on to the room, monsieur. I said, hey, man, brother. He said, Paul Vu, what I say? I said, no. I said, no matter who you are, no matter who you are, if you live long enough, you will reap what you sow. Do your best. 
Do no less. Do your best. Don't do it in the less. I can. I will. I am. Somebody. I am. Somebody. I am. Somebody. Get a picture. I'm getting a picture. Y'all play some music over there. Play some music. Can't play some music. 